With the rise of several epidemics throughout history and the return of health scares such as Ebola, the thoughts of zombies have probably crossed your mind at some point. You'd probably be lying if you said it didn't. In case the dead do rise, I put together a guide on the top tips to make sure you are one of the survivors and not the one eating the brains. In the first few hours of the announcement of the virus, or whatever causes the outbreak, people will most likely be fear mongering and going crazy, and for good reason of course. But because of this it will most likely be like Black Friday all over again, with people looting all the stores. This is why you should avoid all shopping centres. Not only should this be one of the easiest places for the virus to spread, with the sheer amount of people, but you'd probably get crushed under the weight of the people trampling over you to grab what they can. You probably wouldn't have to worry about the water, unless the virus is waterborne. But there's no point taking the chance, right? And plus the water would probably be cut off after a while somehow. Your best bet is to look for bottled water. It's probably the cleanest water source you'll find. That or unless you have one of those water filters to drink safely from a lake, that is. If you have a car, then great. The only problem you'll have is finding the petrol or gas to refuel it. If not, you're pretty much doomed and getting around will probably be an issue for you. Especially when you find out all local facilities have been looted and you can't find food. This is where the next step comes into place. If you have friends locally, your best bet is to meet up fairly early to make sure you have strength in numbers. Sure, there might always be the friend who trips and gets bitten or can't run, but two is better than one, right? Also, if your friend has a car, you have transport sorted. However, if your friend lives in a different city or not locally, it's probably best you don't journey to the house or be the hero to try to pick them up. You'll most likely die on the way if you're on your own anyway, and if you haven't heard from them, it's safe to say, A, the phones are dead, B, they've probably found their own solution and forgot about you anyway. Well, there's also C, they're a zombie now, and you let them down regardless. If you see a friend about to be eaten or their house is being smashed into by zombies, I'm sorry to break it to you, but it's probably not the best idea to save them. Sorry, Gregory. Forming groups is better than going solo. You have more eyes to watch out for zombies and more strength from others to help. But along with this, don't trust everyone. Some people may have lost ones close to them and become delusional. At this point, their mental state may not be intact and they might become dangerous. Make sure group members are either friends or family, or you make sure they're safe first. The bigger your group is, in turn, the more exposed you might be to psychos within the group or ones who want to take your supplies and food. The governor, anyone? Remember the crazy old man next door? The one who fought in the war, whichever one that actually was. Well, he claims he knows how to fly, but it's probably been too long. Once you're up in his plane, you'll think you're home free and away from the zombies, but once you crash into that forest, there's no firefighters around to help you. If you do survive the wreckage, you're in the dark, so enjoy seeing the zombies in the dark. Sound. You've seen in video games and movies where zombies are attracted to it. Well, don't play loud music on your guitar or on the piano. Sure, you can be a self-proclaimed New Age Mozart, but it's highly likely all you're doing is just attracting hordes of zombies whilst doing so. Who doesn't want to die being a rock star during an apocalypse? Have you got a house? Good. Have you got scrap metal or wood and a few tools handy? Then board up your windows. Especially if you don't have double glazing. Zombies don't care about the bill. They'll smash your windows and drag you through them. So make sure they can't get in. Oh, and also you should probably make sure you don't forget to lock that door. The city probably isn't the best place to hide as it will be crawling with zombies. The sheer amount of population sizes packed into cities mean that the virus spreads and you'll have more undead to deal with. If you have the time, try moving somewhere more rural. Just don't use a tent to sleep in. The first season of The Walking Dead should have served as an example for that one. Obtaining a weapon. As inhumane as it sounds, you might have to kill those zombies if you want to survive. Sure, there might be a cure eventually, but then again, maybe not. And they'll probably kill you first anyway. If you're American, perhaps you own a weapon, or perhaps raiding military compounds can supply you with one. But if you're in a different country, firearms are simply out of the question. You might have to go full melee mode. You'll need to run from the zombies, and potential threats, and possibly bullets firing your way. Because of this, you'll need to have a decent level of fitness. That or own a bike, but then again you could lose that. It's probably best to get that gym membership now and save yourself the trouble in the long run. Sure, you don't have to be the next Mo Farah, but becoming Fat Albert might not work in your favour. And lastly, make a survival kit, and keep it somewhere safe in case you need it. Get a special aid kit and possibly dried food like what astronauts and those who survive in the wild eat. This way you'll have most of what you need if you quickly need to depart. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it or have any opinions on it, please leave a comment below. 
feel free to subscribe and like the video if you want to see future content, and any opinions in the comments or suggestions for future videos are also welcome.